Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to Met 10. So in this video, we are going to look at the pharmacology of opioid analgesics. That is example morphine. Okay, pharmacology of opioid analgesics. So firstly, we'll begin with the morphine. So what is morphine? Morphine obtained from morphine is obtained from papaya somniferum, which is a plant. Okay, it is obtained from papaya somniferum. So what do we have? We have something called as opiates as well as opioid analgesics. What are opiates? Opiates are those drugs which are derived from the opium poppy. That is this plant. Okay, though if they are derived from this plant, they are called as opiates, and these are drugs derived from the opium poppy. And what are opioid analgesics which produce morphine like analgesia? They are called as opioid analgesics. So, opiates are opioids, opioids are not opiates. Okay, so first thing is the important one that is the classification of opioids. So, what do we do in the classification of opioids? Firstly, we have the opioid agonists which work like them so we have the common one that is a natural opium alkaloids which are the morphine codeine thebane as well as papaverine so these are the four natural opium alkaloids Followingly, we have the semi-synthetic opiates which are the heroin full codeine hydromorphone as well as oxymorphone so which are the semi-synthetic opiates we have the heroin full codeine hydromorphone as well as oxymorphone and followingly we also have the synthetic opioids okay synthetic opioids are pethidine tramadol methadone fentanyl sufentanyl as well as remifentanyl so we should understand beginning with the opioid agonist we have the natural opium alkaloids that the morphine codeine theban as well as papaverin Followingly, we also have semi-synthetic opiates such as heroin full codeine hydromorphone as well as oxymorphone then we have the final synthetic opiates which are the pethidine tramadol methadone fentanyl sufentanyl as well as remifentanyl then moving on to the opioid agonists agonist antagonist and these examples are pentazosin butorphanol as well as nal nalorfoin okay so what what do we have in the opioid agonist antagonist we have the pentazosin butorphanol as well as nalorfoin so finally moving to the opioid receptors uh, so mainly we have the three types of opioid receptors and uh, these three types are number one we have the mu mu receptors these are present on the spinal supraspinal level and they give the spinal analgesia as well as the supraspinal analgesia okay so mu receptors are present on the spinal as well as the supraspinal level and uh, acting on this mu receptor they cause respiratory depression dependence sedation euphoria meiosis and it also decreases the j motility so what are all the causes uh, after affecting the mu receptors it causes respiratory depression dependence sedation euphoria meiosis as well as decrease in the gi motility then following moving on to the second receptor of the opioid receptors and it is called as kappa k and it, it is also present on spinal as well as supraspinal level and it is also produ produces analgesia on both the levels and what are the causes it also causes respiratory depression dependence as well as dysphoria okay then following the, the third receptors are delta and it also affects on the spinal and supraspinal level giving them anesthesia and the causes are respiratory depression and also pro convulsant action so these are all the uh, three main types of opioid receptors mu kappa as well as delta then what's the me mechanism action of morphine and other opiates they happen through interaction between the receptors that is a mu kappa and delta and these are the main three re receptors through which the mechanism of action of morphine and other opiates happen so moving on to the pharmacological actions of morphine the first thing we have is the central nervous system so what are all the actions of morphine on central nervous system we have the depressant effect so depressant effect this is through the analgesic, analgesic effect it operates through the mu receptors which is the main action of morphine and followingly it decreases the excitatory impulses of the pain from the primary pain afferents in the dorsal horn so what does it do it decreases the excitatory pain impulses of pain from the primary pain afferents in the dorsal horn Followingly, it also causes sedation drowsiness as well as euphoria thus making the person calm as well as raising the threshold of pain so mainly pain mechanism is through the increasing the threshold of the pain okay it causes sedation drowsiness euphoria and thus making the person calm as well as raising the threshold of pain then moderate doses moderate doses relieve dull as well as continuous pain and also high doses relieve sharp severe as well as traumatic pain also so for pain the drug of choice is morphine for severe pain in terms of accidents as well as cancer as well so moderate doses relieve dull and continuous pain whereas high doses relieve sharp severe as well as traumatic pain so and it also causes respiratory depression which has a direct effect on respiratory center in the 
medulla so this is very important causes of respiratory depression okay so mainly it acts as depression effects so first one is the analgesic effect operating through the mu receptors then it also decreases excitatory impulses of pain from the primary pain in the dorsal zone also causes sedation drowsiness as well as euphoria making the person calm and raising the threshold of pain so moderate doses relieve dull and continuous pain whereas high doses relieve sharp and severe traumatic pain so what also causes respiratory depression which you need to watch uh, watch out for which has a direct effect on the respiratory center in the medulla following depressant effects will move to the stimulant effects of the morphine so what are the stimulant effects of morphine the first thing is the meiosis okay morphine produces constriction of the pupils due to stimulation of third cranial nerve okay by stimulation of the third cranial nerve it causes meiosis therefore acute morphine poisoning you have to look at for the pinpoint pupils so if uh, the patient is having pinpoint pupils then it's a direct way telling that the meiosis has occurred due to the action of morphine okay acute morphine poisoning causes pinpoint pupils it also causes nausea and vomiting due to stimulation of the chemo trigger zone as well as bradycardia and physical and psychological dependence so these are the four stimulant effects meiosis nausea and vomiting bradycardia as well as physical and psychological dependence moving on to the effects of morphine on the cardiovascular system so morphine causes depression of vasomotor center it also re releases histamine and it has direct action on the blood vessel and these all three will lead to vasodilation thus causing hypertension of the patient so morphine causes depression of the vasomotor center release of histamine as well as direct action on the blood vessel which indirectly causing vasodilation and causing of hypertension of the patient so moving on to the gi effects of the morphine we have decrease in gi motility causing constipation as well okay and following it also causes urinary retention increases the intrabiliary pressure and it also releases histamine causing itching skin rashes utic area vasodilation as well as proco constriction okay so these are the effects of morphine in the pair firstly we have to understand about cns effects depression and stimulants following the cvs effects j effects and as well as the four five and six so moving on to something study tip whenever you study something okay take a clean sheet of uh, clean sheet afterwards and put everything you know about the topic into the single sheet then followingly look at that sheet more often so what you do whatever you have studied you will tend to forget it okay so after that if you take a clean sheet of paper and uh, whatever you can remember about that topic if you put that into this clean sheet of paper and whenever you are free drinking tea or whatever if you just keep looking into that single sheet it helps you retain for much longer in your exams okay look at that sheet more often your retention will increase up to 80 percent i bet you that okay please do this and uh, ending this session with thought for the day Every every second you spend comparing your life to someone else's is a second spent wasting yours. Okay, every second you spend comparing your life to someone else's is a second spent wasting yours. Stop complaining and create your own definition of success. So this is very important. Thank you for watching, guys. I hope you had a very good time learning. Stay happy and keep learning.